Ah, another year has passed and the VHS series adds another sequel to its list. This time set further back than ever before, 1985. So let's travel back to a time when hairspray was used aplenty and most of you weren't even born yet. God, I feel old. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. VHS 85 is new streaming on Shudder. It's directed by David Bruckner, Scott Derrickson, Natasha Kermani, Mike P. Nelson, and Gigi Saul Guerrero. It's written by C. Robert Cargill, Zoe Cooper, Scott Derrickson, Evan Dixon, Mike P. Nelson, and Gigi Saul Guerrero. The VHS series has been a lot of fun through the years, offering up some truly twisted and whacked out stories from some of horror's biggest and brightest filmmakers. And this year's edition, focusing on the year 1985, is no exception. Looking at the lineup, I was very excited to see VHS 85, as it has some filmmakers I've had my eye on for some time, and I was happy they get the chance to go nuts with the format. Many of the filmmakers were alive and renting VHS tapes during this time, or at least heard about that time. And with so much of that era seen as the golden age of horror, I was hoping for the best VHS yet. Turns out there's a lot to like in VHS 85, and of course, like all anthologies, there are some good ones, some great ones, and some not-so-good ones. Since many of the segments kind of fold up into each other, as it all seems to be recorded on the same videotape over a monster truck rally, it's a bit harder to distinguish one segment from the next. But nevertheless, here's a rundown of what you'll get if you check out VHS 85. Interspersed throughout the film are segments of a hard copy style show called Total Copy, directed by Hellraiser, The Ritual, and the Nighthouse director, David Bruckner. Bruckner also did the popular Amateur Nights segment of the original VHS, and here he uses the VHS style format well as the grainy footage shows a being that is under observation at a scientific facility. The creature looks like a boy, but he's not of this earth, and Bruckner uses this investigative TV format well, building some solid tension that reminded me a lot of films like Australia's The Ugly and even the original Halloween. It's not the best segment, but it is the creepiest of the bunch. We then take a trip to a lake with a group of kids, out to party like they often do in these types of films, in No Wake by Mike P. Nelson, who was responsible for the recent Wrong Turn remake. This segment is split into two parts and pulls off some clever stuff when it comes to writing. This film does a wonderful job of sewing the segments together, having parts of one segment popping up in the middle of another, and then going back to the first segment. I wasn't a huge fan of what Nelson did with Wrong Turn, but I'm really impressed with his spin on camping horror in VHS 85. His tale is unpredictable, kinetic, and fun all the way through. But I think my favorite of the bunch was God of Death by Gigi Saul Guerrero, who did one of the segments in Satanic Hispanics that I felt was kind of out of place in that anthology. But God of Death fits right into the mania of VHS. This segment takes place during a horrific disaster when an earthquake devastated parts of Mexico. Delving into Mexican mythology and following a rescue team who happens to rescue a news cameraman, this segment was unpredictable and moved at a pace that reminded me a lot of the first two rec movies. There's a lot of gore, nudity, farting, and violence to enjoy in this one. T-K-N-O-G-D, pronounced Technogod, was another one that surprised me. This segment was filmed in an art housey format in front of an audience and reminded me of an old Grace Jones concert I once saw when I was way too young to be watching it. It deals with some cyberpunk themes that were popular at the time, and while some of it is tongue-in-cheek, things get bonkers by the end. I like this segment from Natasha Kermani, who directed 2020's Lucky. Finally, everything wraps up with a segment by the filmmaking team of Scott Derrickson and C. Robert Cargill, 
who did Doctor Strange and the Black Phone. I really liked what the pair was trying to do here, but I think their segment, entitled Dream Kill, felt like it was a bit overthought and a little clunky. There were a lot of shocking developments and a shit ton of gore as the pair of detectives investigate a videotape that seems to show a murder scene that hasn't occurred yet. But thinking about how all of it worked together kind of made my mind itch. It's heady horror that delivers some scares and chills, but this segment worked the least for me. Still, there have been some stinkeroos in this VHS series, and none of the segments in VHS 85 are that. The film utilizes the 1985 gimmick without being too cheesy with it, while never forgetting to pepper shocking and gory moments all the way through. This latest anthology is the strongest the VHS series has been in a while. Stuck inside your reality You're doomed Oh, you're doomed You're Yeah. 